question from England. Yes, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, England would like to pose a question for the, uh, for the Commission. We wonder what um, lies beneath the introduction of a resettlement system and in which case or which committee, if it will be the Commission, who will uh, do the calculation of the member states' capacities. And if this resettlement introduction, if this is indeed not undermining the Dublin Convention. The Commission believes that we need to implement a complex approach to the entire issue of uh, asylum uh, management, uh, such as in order to uh, succeed, we need to first process the asylum seekers and those uh, successful uh, should be um, should be dealt with in the spirit of solidarity of all the member states as uh, it has been proven that uh, those member states being initially exposed to larger, exceptionally large numbers of asylum seekers um, not always can manage handling them in isolation. Thus, um, the Commission suggests that um, each of the member states should participate, thus contribute to the burden sharing. And it is our belief that as the effective system of categorization of the migrants um, will be implemented, the numbers of those seeking asylum and being granted asylum would not be to the extent of being able to compromise an economy or um, any other um, dimension, social dimension of functioning of any one of the separate EU member states. Uh, because we believe every member state should uh, participate and eliminate the problem as such by, um, by sharing this burden. And in respect to um, who gets to be relocated where, uh, we believe that uh, there needs to be um, there needs to be a commission. Um, there needs to, to be organized a body that will consist of the uh, national um, experts representing their state's interest uh, in redistribution and of the final numbers of those um, being reassigned to each of the member states <coughs> being based upon agreement of each of the member states um, on a formula that would. Um, you will be able to, you will be willing to open the negotiation for the Dublin Convention? Um, we are willing to open negotiations for um, pursuing to a, an effective migration management system and whatever that entails. I take that as a yes. I would like to follow up on Mr. Gunnar's question because we see that every day thousands of migrants is coming to Europe and too often on the normal taxpayer's expense. Uh, we see lower wages, we see unemployment, we see higher uh, crime rates and uh, this is, these are the people which I would like to call the invisible uh, victims of migration which we rarely talk about. Uh, so I would like to ask again just to make sure that the presidency is aware of this. Um, that these people's concerns are also taken into consideration uh, during these uh, negotiations? Um, the presidency is aware of the, as you call them, invisible victims of migration and their concerns will be into, taken into consideration. And that's all right. Uh, Hans-Peter Friedrich from Germany. Uh, thank you very much for commenting. Uh, beginning of debate. Um, Germany here has got uh, two points that we'd like to mention that it's still in the in the proposition and it refers to the funding of the proposition <laughs> that you've mentioned. <laughs> um, you propose an allocating uh, an allocation of funds uh, to the European policy migration. Uh, Germany was wondering where this uh, money would come from and how exactly it would be allocated. A second point, if you could clarify, is that you, you spoke about uh, the asylum application that will come, that will, should be set to 
input maybe is from outside the EU and the question is who would be funding this mechanism and how it will be set in place. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the question. I'm going to answer the one on funding. Uh, the Commission proposed uh, with regard to uh, better cross-border preparation to establish the new European neighborhood and partnership instrument, uh, which will uh, include uh, the all the existing amount of money allocated for funding the European neighborhood and enlargement policy. Uh, we just proposed to eliminate already existing uh, many funds and financial instruments which uh, restrict flexible and uh, uh, effective cooperation with third countries and to establish this new financial instrument which uh, will target uh, funding of the sustainable development and approximation of uh, EU policies and legislation and bring a radical improvement in our capacity to support this cross-border cooperation. Uh, external dimension of uh, new migration policy proposed by the Commission will uh, also be co-financed by the European Regional and Development Fund, which already exists. So you're not requesting any extra funding from the European member states? Uh, for the uh, external dimension of uh, our cooperation, we are going to uh, go through optimization of uh, all the existing uh, financial instruments. Yes, thank you. And in terms of the asylum uh, processing, uh, Mr. Fugger has voiced the Commission's position. Lucas from the Demos, I'm the Greek Prime Minister. Um, I want to say that I'm very surprised that the Dublin regulation is not mentioned. And I want to ask, um, how can we share the burden if this regulation is not changed? Because currently, Greece um, bears the, the burden for Europe because all asylum applicants have to apply to the first country of the answer. And that is usually Greece. So, how can we solve this problem without touching the problem of the nation? And who is your question, sir? The Commission, whoever wants to. sure that previous regulations and uh, in, in formal conventions don't will will coexist with the uh, conclusions we'll have during the summit here. So, um, so our main goal is, of course, not to to uh, to see a lack of coexistence between uh, one uh, agreement here at this summit and uh, former uh, agreements we have had of other summits. So. Uh, this is 